Come on, good morning, Scotland. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Scarlet. No, good morning, good morning, good morning. Who's ready to worship with us today? Come on. What's going on, friends and family that are with us at home? Um, we encourage you just, hey, just take this moment. And um, we're just going to just take this moment and just really focus in. We're going to hone in on just being with God. If, if everybody could just close their eyes right now at this moment. And um, if you ever feel led to, just in this moment, just to like pray over somebody, feel free to. We're a family here. And we want to encourage that, hey, we, 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 all, we all can pray for one another. This song today that I'm going to share, I just want everybody just to really just hone in and find that one-on-one -on uh, that one on one time with God. And we're just going to dwell with Him. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to see here at your feet. Let's just take our time. Let's just 
please take our time. I just want you. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. Nothing else will do. Lord, I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else, God. Nothing else would do. You're perfect in all of your ways 
Lord, you're perfect in all of your ways. Lord, you're perfect in all of your ways. I know that you're perfect in all of your ways.
that don't make sense to me, Lord, but you're right in the middle of it all. I know for myself, Lord, you're right in the middle of it all. So much better, Jesus. Come on, just for five seconds, let's just give him some praise today. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, we know, God, that you're right in the middle, Father. We know that you're right here, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So this is, yeah. this is a time where we come together as a, as a church, as a body, as a community. And we do so to pray, to pray for one another, to pray for each other, to pray for whatever individual requests you may have. I want to take this time first and foremost to welcome our first time guest those that are watching online if at this time we want to we also want to pray for those that are online if there is anything that you need prayer for we want you to know that you can send your prayer request to scarletnote.org forward slash prayer for those that are here in person, right in front of you or behind you, there are uh, chairs that have a QR code. Be sure to scan that QR code and you can put in that digital request there. Those dig digital requests go directly to me during the week and ongoing. I pray for those requests personally and I also respond. And you know, there's a scripture that says, um, I have it here on my... There's a scripture that says out of James chapter 5, verse 16, uh, and I'm going to read the second part of it, then I'm going to jump into another scripture. It says that the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power. What kind of power? Great power. Great power. So you need to be encouraged to know that your prayers have what? Great power. It has great power and produces wonderful results. Amen. Yeah, right? Yeah. So what produces wonderful results? Great, great right? The great power in your prayer. So at this time, if you have a need, if there is a need for prayer, I don't know, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your challenges are, but this is why we come together. We come together to strengthen each other. So with all eyes closed, all eyes closed, all eyes closed, all eyes closed. Those that are online. We pray for you as well this morning. Heavenly Father, we join together with this assembly, with this body, your church. Lord, this is your design. This is what Christ wanted us to do, to come together, to strengthen each other. Lord, that there is no one here that's better than another one, but that in our weaknesses, Lord, you are strong. So, Father, we surrender to everything that we have tried to do on our own and accomplish on our own, Lord. Father, we say, may it be settled in you. Father, I pray for that man. I pray for that woman online. Lord, I pray for that young person online, Lord, that today may feel hopelessness. Father, we pray together, together, Lord, for that brother, for that sister. And we say, Lord, May you reach them, Lord. May you hear their cry. May you answer, Lord, the prayers, Father, that they are lifting onto you today. Lord, an ongoing, Father, for everyone that is here today, Lord. Father, whatever the struggles may be, whatever the challenges may be, Lord. Father, we lift this moment of prayer. Father, and we say in Jesus' name, it is settled, it is done. Amen. 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 Come on, someone celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this moment, we just want to sing a song together of just gratitude. If you guys know this song, just sing along with us. Um, real quick. Many of us, many of us, we could be going through moments and seasons in our lives and it's, it's tough, it's hard and stuff, but how many can truly say that you're spending your time trying to find that peace in Christ? I know it's a hard thing to do. I Trust me, I, I can speak for myself, but guys, at this moment, really, I, I, I think it's just important that we all just press in. So this isn't just another song that we're singing. Guys, let's worship together. Let's, let's, let's give the highest praise. 
All right? Amen. Amen. All my words for sure. I've got nothing new. That's good. That's good. Take your time, bro. How could I express? could sing these songs as I often do but every song must say and you never <laughs> yeah yeah so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again So that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much I have nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's, can we do that verse one more time, Michael? Come on, one more time. got nothing new how could I express all my gratitude I could sing these songs as I often do every song must end
just to sing out in your own song. Start to praise him just for five seconds. Come on. Hey. So praise the Lord. were children but whenever you got hurt whenever you fell whenever you was just in a struggle you felt like you was in a pit and you couldn't take it no more what was the first thing you did I gotta find I gotta find my parents how many understand we have a good loving father and he's here and he's waiting for you whoa to say anything at all sometimes you just don't have to say anything at all just make a lovely noise into the Lord yeah.
done with me yet. Ooh, no. He's not done with me yet. Cause there's so much more to the story. I know that you're not done with me yet. He's not done with you yet. There's still a plan, Lord. He's not done with you yet. There's still a mighty plan. There's so much more to your story. So much more. He's not done. He's not done with me yet. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
you're gonna hear my praises roar and up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive i'm gonna sing yeah hey so i of what they did today was improvised. I can tell you it was improvised because I didn't know what they were doing. So uh, it was improvised. So uh, good job, guys. Good job. Hey, we want to welcome you, welcome you, welcome you to Scarlet Note. If this is your first time with us, we want to celebrate you. Come on. <laughs> Together with my wife, Becky, this amazing staff uh, here at Scarlet Note, our volunteers, Listen, we do this Sunday to Sunday, 
11 a.m. And we just want to welcome you to our home, welcome you to the family. Those that are watching us online, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you haven't done so and you haven't subscribed to our website, scarletnote.org, make sure you do that and follow us on all of our platforms on social media so that we can stay in contact with you. You know, we worship with praise. We worship with song. And now we're going to get ready for the worship in our giving, in our giving. And it's always an exciting time here at Scarlet Note when we give because we understand that giving is an opportunity for us, for us to demonstrate our generosity in what we plant. And when we plant a seed, it's inevitable that there, there's going to be a harvest coming our way. All right. So I just want to take a moment. If you're going to give online, you could give online to scarletnote.org forward slash give. And if you're going to give by text giving, which is actually my favorite one, uh, 302-200-4034. 302-200-4034. You could text there. Um, or if you'd like, if you'd like, you could also give by checks and you can make those checks payable to Scarlet Note and we have checks uh we have envelopes I'm sorry in the back and you be sure to fill out an envelope and you can deposit that right there in the box and everything goes into continuously helping us grow 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 and uh what an amazing thing let me tell you that uh last year we were able to bless so many families and folk and this is done with your generosity. And um, so we just want to continue to, I mean, look around you. Look around you. I remember that just two years, just two years ago, just two years ago, um, this place was uh, almost bare. Uh, literally, it was, it was almost bare. And it, we were going through the pandemic. It was such a tough time, a challenging time. But listen, there was a faithful group of people that believed and they continue to generously give. And this is the fruit of the giving right here. And even for those that are online. So I want to pray for the giving. I want to pray for the giving right now. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for the generous hearts of your sons and daughters. I thank you, Lord, for the obedience of your sons and daughters, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for those generous hearts. And we say, Lord, that uh, for those that are having challenging times, Father, that you continue to make a way by way, Lord, of your supernatural provisions. Lord, we come together today, Lord, as we sow our seed, knowing that we're not saying goodbye to our seed, but we're saying we're going to see you later as you're going to be multiplied and coming back abundantly. We thank you, Lord. We bless the obedience of your people. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. amen and amen. All right, so at this time... Listen, children, as we dismiss, we're going to do something different. Uh, moving forward, moving forward, dismissing the parents with the children only this way, okay? You're only going this way. Do not go that way. We're going to dismiss you this way. So, Mr. Paul, beautiful young man there, wave your hand so that people can see you, that young man there. That's Mr. Paul. So, children, you are dismissed at this time. Let's pay attention to the video on the screen.
say your name. Oh, I have it. Are you ready? Today we are here with Jay Seba. And we're playing guess the Bible character. So I'm gonna show you guys the emojis and you guys can help each other out or just guess it. You ready? Yeah. The emoji. Samson. And she's right. I don't know who it is. Oh my bad. Right. 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 Today we're here with Luis. David. And we're playing guess the Bible character by looking at the emojis. Are you guys ready? You ready? Yes. Hey, okay, here's the emojis. Okay, oh my god. Jonah. Hey, Joe. Good job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> All right. And today we're here with Crystal and Andy. Andy. Andy What's and up, y'all? Hey, shout out to shout out to my mom. Hey, mom. We're, here. we're playing guess the character by the emojis. All right. You ready, Andy? Right. These are the emojis. There you go. Pointing, uh, rock climbing. Oh, uh, this is Abraham. This gotta be Abraham. Yay! Hey, hey, let's, good job. Let's, Church, this church, this church. Stand to your feet, stand to your feet. I want you to leave your seat, find someone, find someone, say hello, how are you? Give them a real quick high five, an elbow or uh, knuckles, a hug. Say hello, say welcome, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Introduce yourself, if this is your first time, introduce yourself. Come on, everyone. Take a moment to greet. How you doing, Monique? What's up, Nevado? How you doing, sir? What's up, Luis? Nubia, she got a whole corner to her side, to herself. Good morning, good morning. All right, you guys ready? Have a seat. All right, make your way back to your seat. Let's get ready, let's get ready, let's get ready. Man, if you were here last week, we were able to baptize some people, man, and it was such an awesome time. Uh, so get ready for December. December is the, and listen, if you missed it this time around and you feel in your heart that you want to make that declaration, that you want to make that profession public, and you want to say, hey, I want to be baptized, sign up, sign up, because we want to make sure that before the... Uh, year ends that you too are baptized. So are you ready for the word this morning? Yeah. All right, so put your hands together for Pastor Jose the third. Good morning, family. Good morning. Let me get myself together here. All right, cool. You sound like we're working. How is everybody today? Good. Oh, you guys are loud. That's awesome. I'm great. I'm doing well. No one, no one, no one asked how I was doing, but I'm all right. I'm excited, like Pastor uh, alluded to. Um, yes, uh, we had a lot of lives declaring that they were going to follow Christ last Sunday, and it was exciting to see how God was just making that drastic change at that second, at that moment. And I see a lot of people who did that declaration last Sunday, and they're here today. I just want to say congratulations again. I'm so proud of you guys to make that next step in your walk with Christ. Um, so we're going to start our message today. I want to pray real quick. Uh, dear Lord, Father, thank you. Thank you because you allowed all of us to come here today. All of us to come here, Father, eager to get some kind of word, some kind of word of encouragement so that we can continue our week that is coming up um, tomorrow, Father, as we start Monday, Lord Father. We just pray, Lord Father, as you continue to bless everyone here, Father. Thank you for the worship. Thank you uh, through song, and thank you for the worship through our giving, Lord Father. And I just pray, Lord, that you allow me, Father, to speak, Father, 
with, Father, fluency, Lord, Father, where my tongue does not slur, Father, and I'm able to communicate in the way that I need to, uh, because it's not me who's speaking, it's you, Lord, Father. You gave this message to me, Father, and it seems like it's a time to express this today. Um, Jesus, we just pray in Jesus' name, we all say, amen, amen. amen, amen. Again, I'm excited. All those that are watching, we're excited that you chose to be here today with us. Um, I just want to take this moment to give a special shout out to uh, the lead pastor and his beautiful wife. They just finished uh, celebrating their anniversary this past week. 34 years. Yes. Come on, guys. Get happy about it. Yeah. That's a big accomplishment, and I just, I just continue to, uh, you know, get excited every time I see them celebrate another year because they continue to fall in love, and it's kind of, like, exciting, but it's actually kind of, like, gross at the same time uh, because cause they, they just love each other, like, too much. I'm like, God, you know, cut it out, but um, it's all good. It's all good, um, but I'm excited. Uh, they're a great example of who I want to be, especially with my relationship with my wife. I want to make sure that I can hit that 34 years and continue. And I just pray for many more years to come your way, guys. I love you guys so much. Amen. So today, I have a message that I want to bring to you. And I, I'm telling you, we had a, like an a AA meeting today <laughs> um, um, for our volunteers. And everybody was just talking about things. I was like, this is a message for today. And God is putting it in my heart. And today's topic of this message is disrupt your life. Disrupt your life life. Think about this. Disrupt. When we think about disrupt, we just think about our cell phones and all the disruptions that we have in our lives. But last Sunday, there was a few people who made a declaration to disrupt their lives completely. Disrupt their lives completely with the presence of God and continue to walk in this journey. So I just want to share a little story with you guys before I get into the word. 13 years ago, I met this Mexican chick. 13 years ago, I made a decision to talk to this girl from Mexico who was here just to learn English. And I said, why not? I could teach her some English. (laughs) I had the interest in talking to her, but the problem was that she didn't speak English and I didn't speak Spanish. Within a couple of months, I did everything I could, everything I could to learn Spanish. You're probably saying, but you're Puerto Rican. Yeah, I'm I'm Puerto Rican, but I didn't speak it. I didn't speak Spanish. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't something that we did. My my dad would speak to us in Spanish. We we knew what he was saying. My mom would scream at us in Spanish. We knew what they were saying. (laughs) Um, But we didn't speak back. So to me, Spanish is like my second language. Within a couple of months, I did something that impressed my family completely. I learned how to speak Spanish. I tried every day. I tried to pick up things from soap operas that I watch on Telemundo. (laughs) And Univision, these are shows that they're, they're television broadcasting networks that are on a Spanish channel. I watched Don Francisco. I learned Spanish through Don Francisco, which is like the Jay Leno, a little bit more popular than Jay Leno for the Hispanic people. But I did all this. Why? Because I had an interest in talking to this girl. I had to disrupt my life for this girl. Ah, This girl became the reason why I received my first speeding ticket. I asked my father if I could take this girl out, and he said, yes, but you got to take your sister, Alexis. She has to chaperone. And I was like, Dad, what? He said, yes. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to see this girl. And she said, yes, so we're going to drive. And then I saw the lights. Woo! <laughs> and it happened because I was excited. I wanted to be in her presence. I thought she was hot. <laughs> She's still hot. She's amazing. She impresses me every day. This girl became the reason that I started to eat hot Cheetos with salsa, with hot sauce. (laughs) I'm not talking about the the blazing hot Cheetos that you buy that are already prepared. No, I'm talking about you get the regular Cheetos and you put hot sauce and you just fill up the bag to the point that the bag is completely red. (laughs) She did that to me. 
It didn't stop there. You see, she, 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 she came to a time in my life where I was trying to seek more of God, and she continued to show how God continued to work in her life, and it inspired me more. You want to go follow God? Get a girlfriend. It's like I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> no, the thing is, is that she was a very intelligent person. And I told Dad I had interest in her. He's like, there's no chance that she's going to talk to you. There's no way. It's not going to happen. I said, Dad, you're, it's on now. We're going to make this happen. And I looked at her and I said, hey, would you, would you marry me? And she said, ha, 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 no. <laughs> the, the first time. The first time. That was because we was at a Starbucks coffee and it wasn't romantic enough. And I didn't have a ring. I just, just said it. I said, I have a vision. I, wanna, I want you to be my wife. I want to make this happen. She's so smart that she inspired me to go back to school and get my degree. She interrupted my life in that way. She disrupted my life in a way that just changed everything. Despite the language barrier, I ignited a transformative journey of learning self-discovery ultimately reshaping my life in a way I wouldn't have even imagined. You see, this girl was very quiet when I met her. I was very loud. Now I can't stop her from talking. <laughs> She's always excited. She's always telling what she feels and how she feels. I'm like, baby, you got to keep going. Keep talking. I'm listening. I'm listening. She don't stop now. She leaves today because she, she, she's traveling again to go to work, and I told her I was going to miss her. But the point of me sharing this story to you is that last Sunday, many people chose to surrender their lives to follow Jesus. My whole atmosphere changed to talk to my wife. After 13 years, we are happily married. After 13 years, we are in love with each other to the point where I think now I'm disgusting my kids now. They're gross by the amount of times I kiss my wife because I want them to see how they need to treat their wife. So I want to encourage all of you today to disrupt your life by focusing more on Jesus and less on yourself. In order to become more like Jesus, we often need to pause and reflect on the choices we make in our daily lives. It's a journey of transformation. The thing is, journey is in that little sentence I said, a journey. It's going to take some time. But if you keep going at it, there's going to be some form of transformation happening in your life. To begin this spiritual journey, let's explore some disruptions and changes that can help us draw closer to God. Each of these changes will require us to disrupt what is familiar to us. This includes family. This includes uh, 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 family patterns in how we love, how we believe, how we trust, how we live our lives. If we don't make these changes, they can hinder our spiritual growth. You cannot grow in Christ and still live the way you used to live. It's impossible. You can't do it. There has to be an, a, a disruption in your life that happens, that you're seeking God, that you want to know God, that you're saying, hey, I need this time because this is my God time. So let's embrace the disruption and changes that come with following Jesus and let them lead us towards a closer relationship with God. The first point I want to make is that we need to disrupt your life by listening to the right voice. In our daily walk, there's a lot of voices that we listen to that are not from God. They're from our friends, they're from our family members, but they're not from God. In a world filled with distractions, because this world is filled with distractions, it is essential to identify the right voice to follow. Just as a sheep recognizes their shepherd's voice, you should focus on hearing God's voice through prayer and reading your Bible and relationship with him. Don't be influenced by the voices that lead you away from his guidance. Stay focused. Stay focused on your commitment and resist the distractions that distract you 
from following his guidance. I have to back this up with verses. John 10, verse 27 to 28 says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow. This is Jesus saying, my sheep, they know my voice. I know them, and they, they follow me. Now, that should hit you in a way, because that should make you think, does he really know who I am? Does he really see me? He sees you. He knows who you are. But he says, my sheep, listen to my voice. Listen to his voice. I know them. He knows you, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. No one can snatch you away from God. There's no way that you're going to say, oh, I feel like I'm gone. No, that can't happen because as soon as you make that declaration to serve God, to follow God, there's no way that the devil can snatch you away. No way. I'm just speaking to myself. Thank you, Pop. The voice you have the closest relationship with is always distinguishable. The more you spend time with God, the more you're able to identify when God is talking to you. The more you spend time with God, the more you are able to distinguish if this is God or if this is just your wife telling you to do something. When I was a kid growing up, and I'm talking about voices, but when I was a kid growing up, we had a rule in the house. And, and this rule was, you know, me and my brother was living our best life before Alice came. Um, because when Alice came, she took the spotlight off of me and my brother. But when me and my brother were living you know, our best life, we used to ride our bikes around a corner, and normally the rule was, if the street lights came, come running home, because it's time to come home. But for us, it was, if you heard my whistle, if you hear my whistle, my dad had the loudest whistle in our block. He was like, I can't do it, I can't even do it. Dad, can you do it? <laughs> now he can't do it no more. But this whistle was so loud. Alex took it off. Alex took it off. <laughs> but this whistle was so loud. Listen, this whistle was so loud that I would be making, right, like about to make a touchdown in the middle of a football game. Because I, you know, I wasn't athletic, but, you know, when we was playing with a friend, I would be running. This is the way I run. So I would be running, about to make a touchdown. And then he would like, <sighs> and guess what? I will just avoid the touchdown and run straight home. <laughs> Me and my brother would do like a, a race with our bikes against everybody else in a, around the corner. And, and he would whistle. <sighs> And me and my brother were like this, ah! and run home. Why? Because we were familiar with the what? The voice. How can we hear God if we're not familiar with the voice? How can we hear God if we're not in relationship with the voice? We're always hearing all the other kind of voices, social media, TVs, uh, the news, uh, uh, Instagram, uh, 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 the latest song. We're always hearing all these voices. Our friends, when they come to us, say, I want to give you some advice. There's no advice better than God's advice. You want to surround yourself around people who have the same kind of voice as God. That can uplift you, that can encourage you. You see, people often ask me how to hear God's voice. The answer is simple. Spend time with him. That's, that's it. You want to hear God? Spend time with him. You want to get some word? Spend time with him. You cannot, you cannot fill yourself with your own words because you're going to fall apart. Man, if I look at myself in the mirror and I'm looking at myself I'm like, man, you could do a lot better with this body. But because I have a relationship with God, I said, boo, you look good. <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry about it. You got this. And then my wife is over there doing exercise. She's like, Bobby, you can do exercise with me. I'm like, no, girl. God is saying I look amazing. <laughs> if you fail to do this, distraction will capture your attention and wrong desires will overpower the, the voice of God. The less time you spend with God, the more negativity will that will come into your life. And this is the problem. We are filling our minds sometimes with so much negativity that we are pushing away the voice of God. God wants to speak to us. God wants us to, to be following him, to walk in this walk, the straight walk. And I know it's hard. People are saying my job, my career, all of this. Is, it's just a disruption. Why don't you disrupt your life and include God into it? 
and see what he does in the middle of it. You see, people will always try to give you directions on how to navigate the road of life. But if we're listening to the wrong voice, we can find ourselves lost in our own journey. There's a lot of people that we speak to or that I hear speaking to other people because, you know, I got ears. And I hear and I'm like, they've been in this journey for a long time. They still don't know the voice of God. And God is there. The voice of Jesus is there, man. You just have to reach out and read. You spend some time. Many times we are searching out books of encouragement. Read a Bible. That's your encouragement. Pray. That's your encouragement. Sometimes you just have to stay quiet and say, God, talk to me. He'll encourage you. In today's world, it has become easier than ever to find voices that align with our desires. Did you get that? It is easier to find voices that align with our desires. Don't hang around with people that says you're an amazing singer when you're not an amazing singer. You need people to say, bro, look, uh, I love you. But this is, this is, I don't want you to embarrass yourself. You need people to say, look, I, I know that you're, you have this in your heart, but let's pray together. Let's, 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 let's build a relationship where we can pray together so that what you're looking for, you can seek out by the power of God. Some of us are so into what we need and some of us just want other people to agree with what we're thinking that we're not really allowing ourselves to hear the voice of God. We just want to hear our voice in somebody else's mouth. It is easy to find people that agree with us. Yes, it's easy. They agree with you for that moment, but when you turn your back, they're talking about you. The second point I want to make is we need to disrupt our life by making God's direction your top priority. Your top priority. 2 Timothy 4.3 says, For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. People don't want this kind of word. People don't want this kind of word of encouragement saying, hey, you need to do some work. You need to spend time with God. You need to seek out his voice. You need to spend some time. What we're, what we're seeking and sometimes what we're motivating is, hey, you need to entertain yourself and enjoy that moment of entertainment. And that's it. Hey, this spirit needs to continue to strengthen itself. You see, when my son was... <sighs> got that, that, that issue in his brain, and they did that uh, emergency surgery, my spirit is what helped me to strengthen myself. My spirit said, hey, 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 don't fall apart now. You can't lose hope right now. That's that Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks to you. The Holy Spirit reminds you who you are following. That can only happen with the time that you spent with God. That relationship that you have, the work that you put in is what you get out of it. Don't allow yourself to be distracted by everyone else and what they think you need to hear. Allow yourself to listen and, and, and be observant on what God is trying to tell you. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen, no longer listen, and wholesome teaching, and they will follow their own desires. This is happening now. People are following their own desires. I don't need to hear this. I don't want to hear this. I got my own issues. I can deal with my own problems. Guess what? You can't make it without God. You can't make it without his presence. You cannot make it because the only thing you're going to continue to do is continue to walk in circles. It is crucial to be cautious about the disruptions you allow to influence your life. I am very picky when I pick people to hang around with. Why? Because I need to make sure that the same way I'm trying to encourage them, they can also encourage me. Because I'm also human. I have problems. I have problems. But I need someone to say, bro, look, let me pray for you. Let me, let me give you some words of encouragement. Let, can we go out to eat without the wives so we can just talk? I look for stuff like that. I look for relationships like that. Now, it's hard for me because I'm, I'm very, like, I'm an introvert. I know it's probably surprising, but yeah, I, I, like, I do well by myself. But I'm learning that I need to get away from that. 
God is trying to use me, but I, I, can't, I can't hold everything in for myself. I have to be able to speak to other people. I have to be able to encourage other people to say, hey, don't be an introvert. Let's, let's, let's encourage each other. We're all going through, through this. We all need help. It's okay. We got each other. Listening or following the wrong voice can result in both physical and spiritual destruction. Listening or following the wrong voice can result in both physical and spiritual destruction. If the voice you hear does not align with God or with what God has already revealed in his word, then it is the wrong voice. If the voice you hear does not align with what you're reading or what we're talking about on a Sunday morning, then it's the wrong voice. You need to run away. You need to run away. There's a lot of voices out there now. A lot of voices that just want to distract you. That, 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 that don't want to see you uh, uh, complete or, or, or reach your goals and that want to discourage you. God never tries to discourage anyone. He just says, I'm here. I just need more of you. Let me be present in your life. This is what God is saying. Let me be present in your life. Seek me. Knock on my door and I will open it. I'm here. Call out to me. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. There's nothing that this world can give you. God can give you everything. You just have to seek first his kingdom. You just have to seek first knowing him. You just have to seek first uh, uh, developing your relationship with him. When we was going through that issue uh, two, three weeks ago with my son, me and my wife, we, we, we cried but we wiped our tears off real quick. And we said, God is in control. We, we know the God that we serve. God is in control. He's going to make a way. There's a, God is going to show his grace and his mercy in this moment of distress, in this moment of hurt. He's going to take care of us. He's going to comfort us. And this is the way me and my wife were speaking. How does this happen? How does this form of, of speaking happen? By developing a consistent relationship with God. You have to develop this ongoing relationship. There's a lot of people who have that, you know, that goal to lose weight. Good for you. Or, 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 or to grow in your career. Good for you. Great. I, I applaud you. When I met my wife, she had a whole bunch of master's degree. And I said, I got a high school diploma. I got to make sure I can keep up with this girl. And, and I've got my degree. But guess what? I didn't finish there. I continued to seek God. And I'm starting to notice that the degree is great, but God is better. The degree is great, but God is better. That degree is right on my wall, right next to her five master's degrees. It's great. It's nice. But guess what? I need God. I need God to help me. Through my storms, I need him. Because his kingdom comes first. In place with God first. So that's why we feel like everything is going wild in our life. We feel like everything is going out of control in our life because we're trying to fix things ourselves. Let me fix myself before I surrender myself to God. Let me fix myself before I, I, I really dedicate myself to following God. That's the wrong way of doing stuff. It's not going to work. Don't depend on your own means to, 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 to allow you to grow spiritually. You need God. You need his presence in your life. You need him to be there all the time. Sometimes I'm praying to God, I say, God, do you hear me? I'm not hearing anything. And then I hear a little kid talk, and that's God speaking right there. I said, I need to hear that because I, I felt lost. I need to hear that. Or, 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 or there's times when me and my wife are having discussions, and then we say, let's, let's take a time just to pray. Let's, let's, let's bring it down, baby girl. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, I, I understand we're, we're kind of uh, frustrated with each other, but let's, let's bring God into our situation. And when we bring God into our situation, guess what happens? Everything resolves. But without God, it's hard to live. I've never seen a person live amazingly without God. Yeah, you can live amazingly materialistically. But when you don't have God, it's hard. It's hard. Third point I want to make is make joy your top priority and let it transform your life. Make joy your top priority. I want to be happy. I don't want to be frustrated. I got a lot of things with my health. I don't want to be upset. I don't want to be mad. I want to be happy. I want somebody to encourage me. I want somebody to say, let's hang out. Let's do this. 
You want to play tag? Okay. I want to be happy. And guess what? That's, I, I found that the happiness comes from God. The happiness that I feel, that emptiness that I need to be filled with his presence, it only comes from him. Instead of pursuing a short-lived happiness, seek lasting joy that only comes from God. While happiness is influenced by external circumstance, joy is a deep sense of contentment and trust in God's plan. Now, shift your focus towards cultivating joy all the time. When I'm at work, I say hi to everybody, even if, even if they don't even look at me. I'm like, good morning. How are you? You have a good one. I'll see you later. They don't even talk. They don't even say hi to me. But I'm cultivating a culture of joy. I'm cultivating a culture of happiness. That now my son is able to reap the benefits. Because now he's going to school with me. He's in my school. And he's walking around. He said, oh, that's, that's, Mr. that's Mr. C's son. That's Mr. C. Oh, he's good. He's good. He's all right. He's good. He's, he's a good kid. He's a, I'm like, they're all good, guys. All the kids are good. But they say, oh, he's, 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 a, he's a nice kid. And I hear a lot of people say, man, your son has a great smile. He's always saying hi to us. You know, and, and I'm saying it because that's the kind of culture I'm trying to develop my son in. Where they don't have to be the same like every other kid. That they can stand out. So guess what? The same kind of joy I try to cultivate at work, I'm also cultivating at home. It just doesn't stop there. I'm cultivating when I'm in the car. I'm cultivating when I'm, 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 I'm with my wife. I'm cultivating this joy. It's hard, yes, but it's possible. You just have to do something. You just have to put some work into it. Not everything is just like an easy pass. It's that simple. It's not that simple. You have to put some work into it. See, the entertainment industry spends billions of dollars because people are willing to spend even more for a moment of happiness. There's tickets that are going for $2,000, $3,000. And guess what? People are doing this. They're paying it. They're putting themselves in debt. Why? To be happy for two hours. And God is saying, I gave you something even better than that. And it's free. And it's free. <laughs> and eternal. And it's free. And what, we, what do we do? I got this. I'm good, God. I'm, I'm good. He's saying, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm, I'm here, but you don't, you don't want to spend time with me. I'm here. I'm hearing your prayers. God, I need to pay this bill. Okay, well, spend time with me first. And let me help you out. But again, we want that moment of happiness. It is shocking how some individuals are willing to abandon their marriage, their children, their job and responsibility causing destructions along the way all because they believe that they are not happy so they put themselves in debt they put themselves in a situation in their lives where they can't get themselves out because they're trying to seek some form of happiness you see, see when you start focusing on your happiness that's materialistic that stuff falls apart quickly that falls apart quickly when you put God in the center of everything when you put God in the center of, of, of your relationship when you put God in the center of you you, when you disrupt yourself with the presence of God, everything changes. Misguided affection can drown out the voice of God. Misguided affection can drown out the voice of God. I remember, I remember when I went to a, um, I seen a concert um, because you know me and my wife we, we like going to concerts. So I went to see uh, uh what is it? I went to see Andre Bocelli. I like opera. Ooh, I like that kind of music. I don't know, it's kind of weird, but I like that kind of music. And I went to see this guy. And I bought some tickets at Madison Square Garden. And guess where I was sitting? Guess where I was sitting? Guess what I was sitting? What you said at the time? I was all the way on the top. Mommy. Mommy. I got some good tickets. All the way up there. With a binocular. They put a screen right in front of me. They put a screen right in front of me. And guess what? Me and my wife were like this. We do things like that for a moment of happiness. And God is saying, I'm here. I would never put a screen in front of you. You just need to reach out and touch me. I'm here. I'm listening. Don't get distracted. Don't allow this world to distract you. You just have to call out to me. Again, I was up there really high. 
I got kind of dizzy because, you know, I get dizzy sometimes, and I was really high. And I said, this guy don't stop. I was actually tired of, of Andre Bocelli singing for a little while because <laughs> I was so dizzy being that high that I was like, oh, we got to go. We got to go. You see, that's what we do, man. We, we do things like that for what? A moment of happiness. First Peter 1 says, you love him even though you have never seen him. You love him even though you've never seen him. Though you don't see him, now you trust him and you rejoice with glorious, with a glorious inexpressible joy. Even in the midst of difficult times, we can still experience joy. I believe that God intended his people to be joyful people, a joyful kind of people. One voice promises true and everlasting joy in the middle of all your distractions. And that voice is the voice of Jesus. Let's look for that voice. Let's look for his presence. Let's, let's distract ourselves with more of him. Let's, let's disrupt our life with more of him. And let's stop focusing everything on what we want. Let's put what we want on pause for a little while and see how God allows you to grow in your career, in, in, in your life, in, in your relationship with your family members. You know what's the biggest issue in a lot of uh, uh, families? Communication. You don't know how to communicate with each other. Why? Because we're all distracted. And because we're distracted, we don't know how to communicate. We don't know how to solve problems. As soon as you receive Jesus in your heart and you follow Jesus, you start to understand how to communicate with your brothers and your sisters and say, look, I love you. We're going to keep arguing about this, but guess what? It's not worth it. Jesus taught me about how to love, and I want to love you. I want to embrace you. I want, I want you to know that you can confide in me. The fourth point I want to make is that challenge the influence in your life by questioning them. Challenge the influences in your life by questioning them. Take a close look at the people and the things that impact your life, like friends and, and society and culture and media. If they, if they match your genuine desire, your search for God's truth, and your eternal goal. You see, you want to have people that have the same mindset as you. You want to have the same people around you that have the same form of lifestyle as you. Where you can say, look, I, I like that you did this. This is stuff I don't do, but I can, I can relate to this. I, I, I'm seeing that you do this. I see, I remember I went to my aunt's house in Puerto Rico, and, and she was like, we just... Me and my family, my little family at home, we pray before we eat. And we make it a point to present God when we eat and say, God, thank you for this food. And she said, you know what? I love that you guys do that. You don't see that in a lot of homes. And I said, Dee, that's what we do. And guess what? She learned it. She said she's, she started to do it with her little nieces and nephews. She said, it's kind of hard because not all of them go to church. But she says, I'm trying. I said, that's all that matters that you're trying. Allow people to influence your life in a way or allow God to influence your life in a way and not be distracted by it. 1 Peter 1, 13 to 16 says, and I like this, because this verse is all about working. It says, so roll up your sleeves, get your head in the game. Guys, I know there's a football game today. I know there's a football, we're not going to talk about that one. Be totally ready to receive the gift that's coming when Jesus arrives. Come on, we need to start working now. We need to start working now. I, I would roll up my sleeves, but it's kind of tight. We need to start working now and stop waiting for the time to come to then start working. My dad used to say that to me. Oh, I was like, Dad, stop. I'm trying my best. He's like, you need to get yourself ready for when the time is here. Then you're already ready for it. You don't have to get yourself ready at that time. And this is what we need to do as Christians, as believers. We need to start working. We need to start working on our relationship. We need to disrupt ourselves with more of Jesus and less of us. Continue re reading. Don't lazily slip back into those old grooves of evil doing just what you feel like doing. Yes, I know you feel like sleeping. Get up a little bit. Sit up a little bit. Get your book. <laughs> Read. Spend some time before you go to sleep. Do a little prayer. Say, God, you know, I love you. I'm here, God. Speak to me wisely. You didn't know any better than, and you do now. As obedient children, let yourselves be pulled into a way of life shaped by God's life. A life energetic and blazing with holiness. 
God said, I am holy, you be holy. Now you're probably saying, huh, what is that? What is holy? Man, holy is, is trying to strive to be like God. Every morning, read your book. Join us at 633 when Pastor Jose is online. Get some prayers in before you go to work. Get a little bit of his presence in your life. Try to find moments to fill yourself with the presence of God. I'm not saying to be super weird now. I'm not saying to be super weird and condemn everybody. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. In your walk with, 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 with God. But I want you to encourage you to always strive to be an example of who Jesus is in your life. To other people. Allow yourself to be the presence of Jesus in somebody else's life. There's a lot of hurt people out there. We work with a lot of hurt people. And guess what? Sometimes they just need an ear so that they can just speak and, 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 and surrender all their problems to somebody. And you can be that person that allows your, your light, the light of Jesus to shine and give them some answers. They're like, I know this guy named Jesus and he's been working for me. Can I pray for you? But sometimes we, just, we mess up those moments because we're trying to be so holy. Just follow God. Just, just, just try to live a life that is, that is uh, amazing in the eyes of God. This is not being perfect. I'm not saying be perfect because that's going to be hard to do. The only one that was perfect was Jesus. Jesus knew that we weren't perfect. That's why he died on the cross. Jesus knew that we weren't going to, to, to be perfect in everything that we did and that we were going to struggle. And that's why he died on the cross because he said, look, they're going to need some help. So I'm going to give myself up to die so that when they mess up, God, you can look at me and remember all of the things I took, all of the lashes, all of the blood that I poured on that cross so that you could forgive them every single time. That's amazing. That's exciting. That's incredible. You see, my fifth point is take a fresh look at your life purpose and make necessary changes. Understand why you're allowing certain things to shape your identity and uh, destination. Are you seeking justification for personal desires or validations from others? We do this sometimes. Sometimes we just want people to agree with us or we want to hear what people have to say about us so that we can continue our walk. Instead of seeking the voice of God to really say, I love you, son or daughter. You're doing okay. I'm here for you. Just keep moving forward. We want validation from everybody else. And God is saying, you just have to call out to me and I'll give you the answers you're looking for. I'll help your prayers. I'll help you answer those prayers that you're seeking. Are you focusing only on earthly gains? There's a lot of things that we focus on. Sometimes we're worried about the new car. Sometimes we want the big house. Sometimes we want, we want to make millions. And God is saying, you don't need millions because I offer you millions. I give you love. I show you grace. I show you mercy. You don't need any of that stuff. That stuff is materialistic stuff. Ensure your purpose aligns with what God wants for you. Always seek God. Say, God, what do you need me to do so that I can be in alignment with your presence? It was awesome while the worship team was up here. I was over there in the corner, and I was going over my little notes, and my son, he, he came under my arm. He said, Dad, can you just hold me? I said, you all right, son? He said, Dad, I just, I feel God's presence. That's my son, Jaden. My little baby boy, feeling that. I'm like, come on, let's, let's, let's. And I held him tight. And I was like, let's, let's worship God together. That is a million dollars right there. When you're able to hug your kids and be in the same kind of relationship with the Heavenly Father that you're able to say, come on, kids, let's, let's worship God together. That's amazing to see a family unit like that. And that's what we should strive for. How do we do that? By working with ourselves first. I don't force anything on my kids. I say, hey, guys, you have a problem? Talk to me. They talk to me, and I talk to them. So this is what we believe. This is how we live our lives. This is what Jesus said about This is this and that. And then, then they're able to go through their life journey when it comes to school. Is school hard? Yes, it's difficult for our kids. For younger kids, it's very difficult. But guess what? There's no stone that they cannot block. The world is going to throw stones, especially because they have a lot of fruit in their life. So guess what? They're going to be okay. Because they always come back to dad or they come back to mom just to express what they feel. And then I talk to them and, then, and pray and then they go back and say, God, I got, dad, I got this. Proverbs 4.25 says, look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. What is lying before you right now? Think about it. Is your problems just lying before you? 
Is your pain lying before you? Is your struggles lying before you? What is lying before you right now? What is distracting you from seeing the face of Jesus right now? When you find it, push it away because the verse here in Proverbs chapter 4, 25 says, look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. That should be Jesus. That should be nothing else but Jesus. Jesus is there. I'm going to continue to look. Jesus is there. I'm going to continue to walk. My last point that I want to make to you is disrupt your life by transforming your mind. How do you do this? How do I disrupt my, disrupt my mind uh, by transforming my mind? Strengthen your self-control. Trust in God's mercy and focus on his way. This will help you handle life's distractions and change on the decisions that we may find ourselves making at a certain time in our lives. Romans 12, 2 says, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. Into a new person. The reason why I want to talk about in uh, uh, disrupt your life is because those people that made that declaration to follow God, I need you to understand that this is your next step. Your next, next step is to, to distract yourself with Jesus, to disrupt your life with more Jesus. Nothing else. Now, I'm not saying be really spiritual or anything like that. Just find a time just to spend time with Jesus so that he can continue to open up in your life and continue to expand in your horizon. He says, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Disrupting these aspects of your life will help you align more closely with the teaching of Jesus. Now, how do I do this? How do I disrupt my life? I'm going to pinpoint a lot of ways you can disrupt your life. Here at Scarlet Note, we have a lot of ministries. Here at Scarlet Note, if you're a man, we have a men group that meet up seasonally. Women, listen up, because when your man hears that there's a, a, a Bears Knuckles meeting, encourage them to come out. Encourage them to come out. You know why? Because we uplift each other. You, you have never been into a meeting when you see a man cry. We cry. We encourage each other. We say, well, I'm going through the same issues that you're going through. Thank you for being transparent with me. I needed to hear that. Why? Because sometimes us as men, we hold a lot of things in. And it's hard for us to open up to our wives. So I encourage you women, please, when you hear that our bare knuckles are opening up again, it's going to open in the fall. It's opening soon, hopefully. It's opening. Encourage your husband to go. Yes. Don't give him more responsibility to do at home. Say, hey, you need some of this. You need to surround yourself with these godly men. Let's go, 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 go. The other way is to come to our new book club that we have that Miss Debbie Jones is having with the ladies. <laughs> Disrupt your life with some Jesus, but also disrupt your life with a book that's called I'm Waiting on God. We all need it. I was here on Thursday. We had a meeting. And to see all the ladies here, man, it was like incredible. I was like, we need this amount of guys too. Because when, when the ladies come, they come. They come with decorations. Debbie Jones had a tie. She, she took it serious. She said, we're going to make this happen. Disrupt yourself. Disrupt yourself with his presence. It doesn't have to be you by yourself. You need to connect with somebody else. You need to connect with some other people. Here at Story No, we have a lot of ministries here that you can connect with. The other way is to come to our to our battles. Better, couples, yeah. we meet up. We meet up, couples. And it's so funny because I, I, I like to see the different kind of generations of couples that we have that meet up because it's not just one generation. It's all, every, every form of generations under one roof talking about some of the most similar problems that we all go through. And then I see the young people say, oh, you go through that too? I said, girl, we still going through these issues. But we're getting through them. Why? Because we believe in Jesus. We're still, they meet up two or better. We meet up every fourth Friday of every month. We meet up. Unless we have to change it, then we inform you. Disrupt yourself. Disrupt your life. Disrupt with some Jesus. Disrupt yourself with a group. Disrupt yourself with men's ministry. There's a whole bunch of ways you can disrupt yourself. We have a prayer ministry that prays Monday through Friday. 
6.33 in the morning. Amen. This, oh, look at the Debbie. She's like, amen. <laughs> Disrupt yourself with Jesus. 6.33 in the morning, Pastor Jose got his lights on. He already drank his coffee. He is ready. He has his script ready. He's ready to pray for you. Disrupt yourself. Stop waiting till things get worse to then disrupt yourself with Jesus. Stop it. Do it now so that you continue to reap the benefits of his presence in your life. Or you can join our many opportunities here at Scarlet Note. I'm going to start plugging all this in. We have AV, we have audio, we have parking, uh, the parking team, we have prayer, we have the kids' corner. If you haven't seen our kids' ministry, it is growing. It is amazing what they're doing. You should clap about this. We need help. It's growing. Don't, don't be like this. I don't like kids. Don't do that. Don't do that because someone dealt with you when you were young. You got to brush it off later. I got this. Let's... let's I'll, I'll try to work with them. These kids are amazing. They're motivated. They're exciting. It's also when I see the worship team and I see Alicia's daughter running around and she's dancing. I see all the little kids dancing because they're in a culture that's cultivating a, a, a relationship with God that they are free to worship God. That's hard to find. Come on, let's clap about that. We have a team ministry that's happening over there. They meet up every other, uh, every other Sunday. And the reason why they meet every other Sunday is because we have them involved in our AV, in, in our setting up with the ushers, in our greeting, in our, sometimes the parking. When I need some, somebody out there, they go out there and they help. We have our kids involved. Involve yourself. Disrupt yourself. Where we have a cleaning ministry that come out and they clean. And I, I, I just want to give a round of applause for the cleaning ministry. Because... Every Sunday, they find a piece of gum underneath of the chairs, and they say, look at this. I'm like, this, 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 it's, it's okay, man. We're, we need some more cleaning people because we're, we're seeing the attendance, and it's growing, and it's exciting. We want to make sure we can be presentable. Disrupt your life. Now you're saying, how do I disrupt my life? And you're talking about Jesus because Jesus served. When you serve, you understand the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is not about yourself. The kingdom of the God is all about bringing people to Jesus. And growing it, that's all it's about. Accepting who he is and growing his kingdom. Then we have, I actually, I, I like this one, I made this one up. It's called the giving ministry. Sometimes people say, I can't do all that. Well, when you're offering, give. Find a way to give. Pray to God, say, God, how much do you need me to give? You know why? Because everything we do, we do free here at Scarlet Note. And we're trying to reach a generation that is dying, that is withering away. And sometimes we need a little extra a little extra so that we can continue to reach more. Right now, we have about 700 people that are right, David. We have 700? 900. 900. 900 people. Some people say, I don't want to clean. Well, give a little bit more on your offering so that you can help us out so that the people that are here can continue the works of God. Look, well, there's a lot of ways you can disrupt your life and be in the presence of God. Disrupt yourself with Jesus and allow Him to be the one to uplift you. Disrupt yourself with Jesus and allow him to be the one to uplift you. Don't allow yourself to uplift you. Allow Jesus to uplift you. And then you'll see the marvelous works in your life like never before. How many people got something today? Hopefully you guys didn't get discouraged but encouraged. I want to encourage you guys because... I'm seeing the mix of crowd that we have here, and it's exciting. It's exciting because it's, we're coming from all different ages, all different professions, and we're seeing the amount of uh, love that people have coming through the doors because they just want more of Jesus. And we want to make sure that we have a place here that's prepared to welcome anyone who comes through the door and show them the love of Jesus. All right? Well, thank you so much, guys. Can we all stand up? Can we all stand up? So when you leave from here, understand that you got to make some changes. We all got to find some time to disrupt our lives in a way that we can disrupt ourselves to focus more on Jesus and less on us. Some of us are doing it and some of us are saying, I'm trying. And it's it's okay that you're trying because that's where it starts, that you're trying. You want to try. You just want to try. And it's okay that you're not probably in a level that anybody else is at. No, everyone else is at different levels. The thing is that we want you to continue to try 
to find Jesus more and form a relationship with him more intimately. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just say thank you, Father. We say thank you because you are worthy of everything. You are worthy of it all. Your name is the name that we worship every day, that we worship every Sunday, that we worship every morning when we are in prayer um, at 633. Lord Father, I just ask, Lord Father, that you continue to encourage us and continue to encourage us, Lord Father, to disrupt our life a little bit more with your presence, to disrupt our life a little bit more with what you want from us, to disrupt our life a little bit more from what you desire from us, Lord Father, and allow us to continue to surrender ourselves to you. This world is difficult and it's hard and sometimes it gives me a headache, Lord, but you continue to show up. You continue to show me love. You continue to embrace me when I feel like I'm all alone, Father. You continue to say you love me when I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm so far apart, Father. You continue, Father, to show. And this is why I continue to come back. This is why I continue to worship you. This is why I continue to serve you, Lord, Father. I just pray, Father, that everyone that are watching here today, Father, online, through our online, Father, or in everyone that is present, Father, that you can encourage them, Father, to continue to disrupt their lives a little bit more with you. Father, I pray right now, Father, as they enter Monday morning, Father, they can be encouraged, Father, to continue to show your love and your grace to all their co-workers, to everyone that surrounds them every morning, to show their love at home, to show your love at home, Father, that you've taught us, Father, that you've taught us, Father. And I just pray, Father, that you encourage us every day. We all say, Father, amen, Father, but we say amen, Father, knowing that you got our back no matter what. So whatever comes our way, you're going to take care of us. So in Jesus' name, we all say amen, 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 amen. Come on, give him a big round of applause. He is worthy of it all. He knows our struggles. He knows our pain. If you are still watching us, I just want to say thank you for joining us. Please come and watch us next week as we have Dr. Gladys, who's going to share an awesome word with us. And I, I just bless you all. Take care. Bye-bye. Love you all. See you guys all next Sunday for all those that are online. All right, guys. Well, that wraps up another Sunday, another exciting time here at Scarlet Note. We hope that you enjoyed your time with us as much as we enjoyed our time with you. We hope that next Sunday at the very same time, 11 a.m., you consider joining us back and being our guest and tell your friends and family about our church. So God bless you. We hope to see you again next Sunday.